Okay, so I get it. Maybe these 3D printed helmets from comic books may not really be your taste. But did you know that 3D printing is now being incorporated into different sports? One of my favorite players, Jalen Brown, actually had a period of time where he had to use a 3D printed carbon fiber mask to protect his face during in from injury. And crazy, once he took the mask off, somebody actually threw an elbow at him and almost injured him again. And his mom kind of said, hey, put it back on. <laughs> uh, or maybe you're into sports. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but with new technology, with new scanning technology, each NFL player has the ability to get a custom fit or a custom model scan of their head to get a helmet that best prevents injury for them. Or maybe during the dunk contest, you've seen the new 3D printed NBA basketball. These are new technologies that are being incorporated into different sports that we watch every day. And with your intellect, you can add something into the sport. Just think about it. Imagine going down to your closest basketball court and having your own 3D printed basketball that reacts just the same as the normal Wilson ball. Or going to your, no your local field and having a 3D printed football. I remember back in the day, the Nerf footballs were kind of the football that were the footballs that were kind of cool. So just imagine with technology what you can do. So this is going to be a reaction video to everything that I'm just basically describing from the NFL to the NBA. Let's check it out. Everything in the football world that means ground versus technology slash innovation, it really changes the game. And as it relates to helmets, that change usually comes from the market leader, Riddell. And on this episode, we'll give you an exclusive look at that latest installment, The Action. I'm Leland, but with Sports Dissected, the series. <laughs> So that's what I was showing a little earlier. Creality has its own version called the ferret, where you can actually make these scans yourself. You scan a player's head and put that scan data to a fitting algorithm and chooses the cell and the internal liner system to test it. So this is a type of test apparatus, helmet test apparatus. It's called a linear impactor or it's called a pneumatic ram in the, in the helmet standards, but it's really designed to replicate the helmet and head of one player right in the helmet and head of another. And that's a big thing. As you notice, a lot of quarterbacks' rules have been changing. A lot of head-to-head -head combat or collisions have been changing. So adding this technology is something that's pretty big. This is historically a very traditional way of evaluating helmets. Um, Football helmets uh, have been subject to the standard since 1973. Um, it's, a, it's a barrier impact, so the 60 inch drop onto a steel anvil can vary from near past to the helmet. I mean, there's almost no steel anvils on the football field. And I think that's a big impact in the and football as well is not just the hit, but the contact or the, the quick stop when you actually hit the ground as well. So this is a good test as well. I think we have the story of the molecular product races. Yeah. So kind of what is the role as far as with the action here? Uh, with the action of the being the director of product creation, um, I'm kind of. Uh, in, in charge of the, uh, the research development, um, you know, anything that is going to be created, uh, the action of the ground-up helmet, the smart helmet, the type of sensor uh, included 
in the, in the helmet, I'm standing with the helmet that uh, monitors, um, or I should say senses impacts, and um, is able to give feedback to the uh, equipment manager, or really the coach and the flight trainer to see what's going on um, on field. We've, we've implemented and released uh, a scanning app that you can just scan with an iPad or, or your mobile phone. Um, so that's and they have those for free as well. You can try Scandi Pro. I actually have a video showing how I used it to make a scan of my head that I used to make my helmet. readily available. So now a player can scan his, his peers or his, uh, his teammates. A mom can scan his uh, son or daughter. A coach can scan their, their athlete. In order to purchase an accident helmet, you need the head scan. You need your head scan. Um, and what we do is we take that head scan in the app for you to, to acquire the head scan now. Um, and it automatically gets uploaded to our server. This is actually the drone, uh, Elliot. Um, so head scan gets populated, um, brought into our 3D software. Uh, after that, these are some of the points that get analyzed. We, we analyze uh, approximately you know, a few thousand points on the, uh, the head scan. We know where those points are. What are the paths that best fit this head? Um, then a build matrix gets you know, generated based on that specific head scan, um, and this gets sent to our um, manufacturing plant in North Ridge, Ohio, and they will pull those those uh, those paths from the cell, throw them in the helmet, throw the sensor in, tie everything to that specific ID, the player ID, and ship it off. And now that uh, you have a helmet that is specifically built to that player, uh, and the only thing that has to happen is the player puts it on his head. The big game is finally here. That's just crazy in itself. So each player basically gets their own representation, their own model that they can continuously tweak and make adjustments to. Build this personalized helmet for you. Build you a true fit action helmet. Um, so to start off, um, just going to have you sign, sign your signature on here. Right. So this is the process you go through. You profile pictures of you, one from the front, one from the side, what this does, it helps our team to understand like your head, the map of your head, your hairstyle, what, what's underneath the hood, underneath the helmet. All right, all right, so the next step, I'm going to have you put this hood on, and you're going to put your head through this part, so this colored line, blue stripe, you want that in the back. So for this, I have like a, a do-rag to do that. You can use like a head stock. Basically, you just want to compress all of your hair. That way you get like a better representation just of your head. So I'm going to go ahead and start this next process. Can't find my head stock right now. Are you driven by purpose? But yeah, you just don't want your hair sticking up during that process. You just want like a true scan of your head. Now, as I walk around, it, it takes a series of photos and sends all these up to the cloud. They all show all these photos together and they send it back down to us in the form of a 3D model. So shortly here, um, you can see right now it's generating your model. And as soon as this pops up, we'll be able to uh, view your 3D model. And from Scandi Pro, it does the same thing. You can convert it to STL file and then send it straight over to your computer. But there are like mess mess mesh mixer and other softwares that you can use to like clean it up after that. So now that I have this scan, now I can go see what kind of pads I need. Yep, we can go uh, get a helmet built for you. All right, so Brian, you are the general manager of the Inside Analytics team. Okay, and so what is that? What is it entail? So Inside Analytics is our new subscription service we're offering to teams where we use the impact data to collect off the helmets to provide reporting and analysis to this. And so what this is collecting is every impact that happens when you wear this helmet. And that means the severity of it, that impact, where on the helmet it was, and when it happened. So every impact is timestamped. So that information by itself is just a bunch of numbers coming off the system. What we've then built is a reporting package on top of that. So we can make sense of the information. The beauty is that the battery life lasts all year. So the way this set up is when you put it on your head and put anything around it collects data, as soon as you put it down, the battery turns off. Right. So it, it, the one nice thing is, unlike a lot of other data capture things, you have to charge it every day. 
don't have to be present every day. So a lot of times the players aren't even aware that it's in there, they don't feel any different. And then the way we collect the data, and this is where for your question about the computation, like that. Okay, so they keep data based on the different uh, hits. And it's going to tell us which of the 11 bare wires is hit. And then, you know, our operator here is going to get a pitch sheet of all the parts. This is big in football. Your visor, it goes based off kind of like your position. Like you kind of want it to make it look like a mean kind of grow. Like certain running backs pick a certain kind of style. Certain receivers pick a different type of style. And then you go through this aisle and just going to go through all the three of your shopping list. You've got one of these, one of these, one of these. To get you the, the, the liner that fits in your head exactly. So then what am I looking for? Uh, so this is going to tell you in each of our internal liners, this is our, our lower front, upper front crown. It's going to tell you what part number to put in. Okay. And that's all based on the scan data we got. Okay. So these are the different foam inserts that they have inside. All right. There we go. I think we're good to go. All yeah, the padding inside. <laughs> okay, so Google. Uh, I gave you a new title. Inside out. Inside out. But what's the what's the official title? Uh, inside operations. Okay. And what is that inside? Of? Yeah. So basically, what we do is we uh, trace and track the inside sensors from the moment they come in here until the moment they leave the building. So not only in the new helmet build process, but also in the reconditioning process. We test these every time during reconditioning, so we make sure uh, serial number on the unit is tracked properly, and uh, we're keeping track of the warranty system purposely to ensure the security. So as soon as this thing is fully assembled, which will be later, um, it's ready to go. Like it's already tracking my information. It could potentially be. Yeah, within minutes, it's going to upload. It's going to go from our production database to our impact database. Even the shell, there are certain files on Thingiverse that you can just find in the shell, find your own like grill, and just start working on your own. And that way, we know that when this sensor takes a hit, we know it's Leland on the field. He just took that hit. So I can demonstrate that real quick. So we'll start here with the RFID. And this contains all the player information, right? Like the uh, player name, the team, uh, his build configuration. How I like how they did that. Like, it looks like a game like that. So we'll scan that to start. And then what we're doing is we're assigning the sensor to that RFID and that's we're assigning it to the player. So like I mentioned, when this sensor takes a hit, we know that it's this player taking a hit. Now this is a huge advantage for us because in years past, this is something we had to rely on coaches to do or for our reps to do to go on the field because when the helmets leave the building, we don't know who they're going to. You know, now we know it's going to Leland's head before it even leaves the building. So we can take full, full advantage of that and uh, maximize the numbers. All right, so uh, what, what, is, what is Matt working on right now? Uh, today, Matt's working on uh, one of our newest uh, helmets, which is the Axiom. Okay. Uh, so uh, his first step was to scan the actual RFID. Uh, uh, tag to make sure that we, you know, um, you know, marry the helmet up with the actual, uh, to confirm, you know, that this helmet actually belongs to, to me, uh, to you. So if it's Leland's helmet, we want to make sure that, you know, uh, as we uh, perform the scan, that it matches up to the profile, so that Leland gets the helmet that Leland actually wears. When the action first came in, what was your initial thought? Um, oh, oh, no, no, this guy has done this a couple of times. <laughs> Customers are excited about it, so um, you know we're looking for Axiom to, to be around for a while and to be the preferred overall helmet uh, for the go. That's crazy. And you can see we're taking our flex technology to the next level, uh, where our traditional flex was only at the flex impact here, but now we have it in all four areas. Um, so again, our ultimate goal is for team player safety. And if you choose to uh, wear a Bedell helmet, you're getting that. All right, so Rick, uh, we're here with uh, Becca. Rebecca, aka Becca. And you're going to show us the detailing process. There's no real formal process or setup to it. Uh, some okay, I figure it wasn't paint since they already got all of this done. Some might be those side details. That's crazy. All right, so you said a line is four. They're going to be respect. No pressure, Leo. Yeah, I see. All eyes on me. From adding carbon fiber wrap to my death stroke helmet, this is not easy. Maybe. See what we got. How we working? Not bad. Before 
unveil my side, guys. Let me put this little disclaimer out. This is my first time. A little second. But, but funny if you put it backwards. <laughs> only thing left now is uh, you gotta get, you gotta get it fitted. Make sure it fits me. Uh, yeah. You know, my glasses. Thank you, sir. All right. And just like that, you have an NFL helmet. Like I said, maybe football is not your thing. Let's check out what we got in the basketball world. The three dimensions. When I started at Wilson, my boss, Kevin Krishak, charged me with the task of reinventing the basketball. A project like this begins again because we go back to we're always trying to look at what's you know new cutting edge technologies. The technology that really struck me was additive manufacturing because it just enables so much change about the ball. And that's basically what 3D printing is. It's additive manufacturing. It's just the process of building on top of something with the material that can completely alter the athlete's experience, the way it's made, everything that we care about. The engineers started working together with industrial design. So bringing those two together, we were able to come up with several designs Crazy. that we then later iterated on that resembled a basketball, felt like a basketball, but also performed like a basketball. And the most important part of the formula is also is the player, right? Because if the player doesn't love it, then it's not going to be a product or a prototype. We met with General Lattice. We made our design with them, and it was translated to a digital file that can be read very easily by the printer. We sent that file to EOS. Working with a brand like Wilson is a little bit different for EOS because we are traditionally working with aerospace companies, automotive companies, medical device companies. Additive manufacturing was the right choice for the airless prototype because first off, it's literally the only technology on earth that could bring this concept to life. So what happens is there's a powder bed that's swept across and then a laser almost etch sketches a pattern in two dimensions. And as this process iterates over and over, you end up with a three-dimensional ball. Removing that powder from the ball without damaging the ball is kind of a, like a, an archaeological dig. And at that point, the powder is sealed using a smoothing technique and then dye is penetrated and reacted with the polymeric surface. After that process was complete, we would send the ball to our NBA test facility in Ada, Ohio, where they would put the ball through rigorous testing. This is only a dot on the development path, uh, but we're really excited about the first step that we have here. And I think that's our goal, that's our job is to is to push boundaries, change perceptions of the brand. That this is what we call the one. You know, basically, this is like that's my like message one. to you guys. Enjoy it. It's it's to think outside of the box, be creative, future. and try to something see this new. narrow into one single product and all the decisions. This is a technology that you can do straight from your closet right at home. Such a life changing process for me. Advanced BZ Comics. Peace.